you guys and welcome to my channel. I am super excited for today's episode because we are going to be talking about the debt snowball versus the debt avalanche. Which one is the better system for paying off debt? Is one or the other really a faster method to pay off your debt? And is Dave Ramsey actually right whenever he says that the debt snowball is the best way to pay off your debt? So I'm super excited about this episode because I'm going to be sharing with you how our family has paid off over $100,000 in debt. I'm going to share with you which one of these two systems we use and why and give you the breakdown and the 411 on what the differences actually are in these two systems. Now, before we get too far into this, I do want to make a little disclaimer that I am not a financial advisor. I'm not here to tell you in any way, shape, or form how to use your money, how to spend your money, how to invest your money, how to even pay off debt. I'm just here to share my experiences with you in hopes that this helps you to get that debt paid off because one way or another, debt has got to go. Now, can you use debt in a good way to get ahead financially? Yes, and many people would argue that debt can actually make you very, very wealthy, but it's only the right kind of debt, and there's a very small percentage, I mean like probably 1% of people that actually do this correctly, and aside from that, it's all just mostly consumer debt that people are carrying around that is really, really hindering them from getting ahead financially. This is stuff like credit cards, car payments, other consumer debt, student loans, and so many other things. So I'm hoping that in this video, I will be able to kind of show you the difference between these two systems and give you an idea of how we made this work for our family. Okay, so before we dive into these two methods of paying off your debt, I do want to point out that there are three major keys that are going to help you along this journey. And there are three things that most people don't do. And this is the reason why most people actually stay broke and never end up paying off their debt. So I feel like we have to address the elephant in the room because a lot of people are just going to tell you that you need to start some way paying off your debt. But at the end of the day, if you don't have the right disciplines and you are not using the right behaviors to pay off your debt and to get ahead financially, it's all going to come crumbling down. It's not going to be a very good ending for you. And I want to help you avoid all of that. So the first thing that really keeps people from paying off their debt is that they don't even have a budget written out. They have no idea where their money is going every single month. They're literally just spending money as it comes in. And have you ever heard that phrase, I don't know where it all went? Well, most people have no idea where it all went. And that's the biggest problem is that they don't have a budget set up. So they don't know where their money is actually going. Now, number two is that a lot of people don't even have any idea how much debt they have. Huh? And so one of the biggest things that really helped us when we were on our debt-free journey was to list out all of the debts that we had. And this included everything from credit cards, auto loans, uh, our mortgage. If you're somebody that has student loans, we didn't. But if you do, make sure that you write those down, all of your debts. And just know what you have and what you're working towards because at the end of the day, if you don't know what you're working towards, it's going to be really hard to achieve that goal. Number three, this is another really big thing that holds people back from actually paying off debt. And that is probably that they didn't smash the like button on this video. They probably didn't subscribe to this channel and they probably don't watch these videos. But in all seriousness, they are not surrounding themselves with people that are helping them get closer to their goals, but rather they're surrounding themselves with people that are destroying their goals by pulling them back into old habits. So make sure that you're surrounding yourself with people that are going to lift you up, that are going to help you along the way, because you actually do become like the five people that you surround yourself with the most. So my goal is to never be the smartest person in the room. I'm always learning. I'm watching YouTube videos on finance. I'm reading books. I'm talking to financial advisors. I've talked to people that don't have a lot of money as well as people that do have a lot of money so that I can learn what habits these people have and get as much knowledge as I possibly can from people that I want to learn from. So my hope is that this video is going to transfer all of that information as uh, effortlessly as possible to you so that you don't have to go through the hours and hours of training that I have been through to bring you all of this information. Okay, so let's talk about the debt snowball. So the debt snowball is pretty famous because of Dave Ramsey. I don't think he really invented it, but he definitely made it a lot more famous by sharing it on his channel and his radio show. 
So a lot of people are super familiar with this method. And in the debt snowball, uh, you basically list all of your debts from smallest to largest. So for example, if you have a credit card that has $1,000 on it, a car payment that your balance is $20,000 on that car, and then you also have some student loans that are $100,000, you would list them in that order from smallest to largest. And essentially what you do is you only pay the minimum payments on all of your larger bills except for the smallest balance. And on that one, you will take all of the extra money that you can possibly find from your budget and you will throw that onto the smallest debt in addition to the minimum payment until that debt is paid off while only paying the minimum payments on the larger debts. And once payment number one is paid for, you will then take all of that money plus any pennies that you can find from anywhere else in your budget and you will then put that on your second largest payment, on your second largest um, balance is what you're going to do. And then once you finish with your second one, you're going to move to the third one and you're going to continue to do that until all of your debts are paid off. Now, the biggest argument for the debt snowball is that it really helps you to develop the behaviors and habits that you need to be successful with money. So for us, we did actually choose the debt snowball. And I want to share why we chose the debt snowball, because I know a lot of you guys that are very mathematical and analytic are sitting there thinking, yeah, but what if I have a higher interest rate? Don't I want to make sure to pay that one first? And while I do understand the argument behind that, it doesn't necessarily give you the quick wins like you will get if you're using the debt snowball. So if you're somebody that has a hard time staying disciplined, maybe you have a little bit of a hard time staying focused, or you're like me and you're a natural spender, you like to spend money, and you feel like you really need to get those quick wins, then the debt snowball is going to be a really great option for you. And I feel like for 99% of people, this is the best hands down option that you can choose to pay off your debt because it gives you those quick wins. So imagine it like you're trying to lose weight. Let's say that you have to lose 50 pounds and you know that sounds so crazy to you. Like it just sounds like so much work to lose 50 pounds. But if you're doing everything that you know you need to do, you're staying on track, you're eating healthy, you're working out, you're doing all the things. And in your first week, you lose five pounds. You're that much more likely to stay on track to continue to lose the other 45 pounds because you got a quick win in the beginning versus if you do everything you're supposed to do in the first week and you don't really lose any weight, you're a lot more likely to fall into remission, to start back into your old habits, and it's the same thing with your finances. The better habits that you develop and the faster that you start getting these wins, the more motivated it makes you. It helps you get excited about where you're going, and then it ends up just becoming this cycle, and it's fun. Like It actually ends up being really exciting to pay off your debt because you're excited about where you're going for your financial future, for all the things you're going to be able to do in the long run because you decided to start being disciplined with your money. So again, with the debt snowball, you're not worried about interest rates whatsoever. All you're doing is simply listing your debts from smallest to largest, and then you are applying any extra money that you can to the smallest debt until it is paid for, and you just continue on until all of your debt is paid off except for your mortgage, which is a totally different topic that we can discuss on another day. But now let's go ahead and get into the debt avalanche and how this is different from the debt snowball. So a lot of you are probably wondering, yeah, but Becky, like, doesn't it make a big difference if you have a higher interest rate? Wouldn't you want to pay that off first? And yes, I do understand that mathematically that is correct. But as Dave Ramsey says all the time, this is not a math problem. It's a behavior problem. And until you fix your behaviors and your disciplines around debt, it's going to be very difficult for you to get ahead financially. So the debt avalanche can be beneficial in some cases. So I really feel like the big thing with the debt avalanche is that you just have to be really disciplined. And to be honest, I mean, come on, it's probably like 1% of the population that is actually disciplined enough to make sure that they continue to pay off debt even when they're not getting those small wins. So with the debt avalanche, you will typically pay less money to get your debt paid off because you're starting with the highest interest rate. So for example, if you have a credit card that has a 20% interest rate because credit cards are absolutely ridiculous, and then you have a car that has a 2% interest rate, 
logically it would make more sense to pay the credit card first because you are being charged an insane amount of interest and you want that debt gone so you don't have to worry about the interest rate however if you owe less money on your car you would be able to pay that car off in a faster period of time and then take all of that money which is typically four to five hundred dollars a month for the average car payment that you could then turn around and apply to your credit card to pay it off even faster but not only are you going to be able to take that payment and roll it into the credit card, but you're going to get that quick win and you're going to get your car paid off faster. So this is not always going to be the case. This is really just somewhere where you have to look at your budget and you have to just look at your finances and decide what's going to make the most sense for you for your particular situation because I really believe that there is not a one size fits all. This is really kind of going to depend on your lifestyle, your budget, your finance, just how many bills that you actually have, how much debt that you have. If you only have a few hundred dollars worth of debt, it's probably not going to make a huge difference if you're paying, you know, on one that has 15% interest or one that has 10%. It would probably just be better to pay off the smallest one first, get that quick win under your belt, and then continue to move forward from there. So the question is, is Dave Ramsey actually right? Becky, do you follow his advice? Now, I will say there are a couple of areas where I actually disagree with Dave. This is not one of them. I really feel like the debt snowball was designed this way to help you with your behaviors and your disciplines. And I can actually say that after we paid off all of our credit card debt, I have been so much more disciplined with my finance. I've been saving more money. I've been investing more money. I've been really watching my budget. And it's not to say that I can't do anything fun. It's not to say that I can't have anything nice. It's just that whatever I do buy, and the money that I spend on you know, trips, food, things like that, it's all just tied into my budget so that I know where my money is going. So being on a budget doesn't have to be like this painful thing where you can't do anything fun. Now, if you do have debt, I am with Dave also in the area that you do have to be gazelle intense. You have to make sure that you are super focused, that you're paying off this debt. And during the time that we were paying off our debt, we didn't do a lot of extra things. We didn't go out to eat. I actually gave my husband a $20 budget to eat for the week so he could either pack lunches with that money, he could buy lunch, but $20 and once that was gone, it was gone. I know that sounds crazy, but when you're super focused about paying off your debt, you have to do things that are uncomfortable to get ahead. So if you continue to do the things that you're doing now, you're going to just keep getting what you're getting. So a lot of you are probably thinking by now, but Becky, I don't have any extra money. I can't even hardly pay my bills. How the heck am I supposed to be paying off debt when I can't even keep up with the bills that I have to pay to keep afloat? I understand completely. I've been there, done that. But what I'll tell you is that when you follow the first three tips in this video and you simply create a budget, and you figure out where your money is going every single month and you list out your debts and you start surrounding yourself with people that are knowledgeable in the area of finance, I think you'll find that there's actually a lot more money floating around than you think. And when you're trying to pay off debt, you just have to do crazy stuff. I mean, if you're serious and you don't want to live life the way you're living it now, like I said, you have to do something different. It's not going to be painless. It's going to suck for a little while. You're going to have to do stuff that you never wanted to do, but it's going to pay off in the long run. So while we were paying off debt, I mean, we were literally doing the craziest stuff. We were practically selling everything in our house. We were selling clothes, furniture, guns, basically everything you can think of that we had that we could liquidate. We were selling it because we were that serious about paying off debt. I was sick and tired of feeling like a slave, like I could never do anything until I paid somebody else first. I was tired of having that feeling on my shoulders like, well, we can't even go to the movies because until I pay somebody back for this other bill that I borrowed from last month, I can't really take any money and put it towards fun things that we actually wanted to do. And life is way too short to be super stressed out all the time. And it usually comes down to just living within your means and making a few small changes and instead of trying to keep up with the Joneses, just doing things that are going to help you get ahead financially. So most people probably didn't even get through this video. They probably have no intention of paying off debt. Maybe they kind of thought about it for a split second and then they just aren't really going to do anything about it. My hope for you is that you will continue to plug into these videos, that you'll destroy that like button because it really does help the algorithm, that you'll share this with a friend 
subscribe and click that bell so that you can come back every single week and watch new videos and that not only are you going to listen to the stuff that I'm sharing on this channel, but also that you'll seek out other people like Dave Ramsey and other people that are super good with their finances so that you can get ahead in the long run and actually take action on it because without action, nothing's going to happen. You got to change it. So thank you guys for tuning in and I will see you next week.